I previously made a video talking about this pretty horrible job interview question, link in the description. We had this sequence of grids with dots in them, and we had to figure out what the next grid of dots was, and there's just not a whole lot of obvious discernible patterns here. That one was bad, but for a totally different reason, this one could be even worse. The goal here, of course, is to solve for the question mark, what number is supposed to go here? Your mind is probably already working on trying to find patterns and filling in this square. One obvious possibility is that row 3 contains a 1, row 2 contains a 1, and so it seems natural that the first row should also contain a 1. Right now it doesn't, so the question mark must be a 1. But of course, 1 is not the only possibility, it's also easy to arrive at an answer of 3. We just have to look at the sums of the columns. If we sum up the columns, the rightmost column, 3 plus 3 plus 3, gives us 9, then 2 plus 4 plus 1 is 7, then 4 plus 3 plus 2 is 9, then 5 plus 2 plus 2 is 9. Then, since this third column, which was 9, is the middle one, we can see that to the right of it, it had a 7 and a 9, and so we may suspect that to the left of it, it should also have a 7 and a 9. This column was 9, so this column must be 7, and that would mean the missing number has to be 3. This column here is 9, and then for this one to be 7, we need 3 plus 1 plus 3. Of course, that's just one way of viewing this grid of numbers. There are some other distinct characteristics in the picture besides just the grid arrangement. One such feature is these big black dots. These dots kind of outline three of these numbers as centers. So the first pattern I actually saw came from adding up three by three squares of numbers with those numbers outlined by the dots in the middles. For example, if again we start on the right side, add up this grid of 3 by 3 numbers. 4 plus 2 plus 3 is 9, 3 plus 4 plus 3 is 10, and 2 plus 1 plus 3 is 6, so it adds to 25. Then move on to the next 3 by 3 grid of numbers. 5 plus 4 plus 2 is 11, 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 9, and 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5. Again, it adds to 25. So then surely the sum of the numbers in this last 3x3 three three square will have to be 25. This is such a definitive and fairly simple pattern, surely the sum of the numbers in the last 3x3 three three square is 25 as well. 3 plus 2 plus 2 is 7, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, that brings us to 13, plus 4 is 17, plus 5 is 22, so the question mark must be 3 to bring the total again to 25. So just by looking at the rows, we had one really simple explanation of why the answer might be 1. Now we have two possible reasons the answer might be 3. Like I said, the reason I found that particular solution first is because of how the dots outlined a square like this as the center of something. But there is still yet another important feature of this picture, which is this thick, bold line. Look at all these other vertical lines. They're thin, but this one here is big and bold. So what the heck could that mean? Well, maybe this bold line is supposed to suggest we should look at these 2 by 3 rectangles. Its presence here makes this 2 by 3 rectangle clear. Maybe we should add up the numbers in it and do the same thing for the other 2 by 3 rectangles and see if there's a pattern. Okay, well, if we add the numbers in this first 2 by 3 rectangle, which is carved out by the bold line, we get 16. Then if we move on to the other 2 by 3 rectangle, this is 6 plus 7 plus 3. So again, 16. Then looking at the next 2 by 3 rectangle, this is 9 plus 5 plus 4, so that is 18. Since both of the 2 by 3 rectangles on the right added to 16, we may suspect that the two 2 by 3 rectangles on the left should add to 18, since the first one does. So if this 2 by 3 rectangle is to also add to 18, then the question mark needs to be equal to 5. That would bring the total to 18. 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 
plus three is 13, plus five is 18. Okay, so now we also have one possible explanation for five being the correct answer. Okay, so we have some convincing options, but which of these numbers is best? We may think that three is best since we were able to come up with two explanations for it, but unfortunately, at least according to this question, all three of those answers are wrong, because one last detail I cut out for suspense is that the only available answers to this question were six, seven, eight, or nine. Which means we need to keep making up random bo- I mean, we need to continue our thorough analysis of the patterns. All right, well, get a load of this. Let's again look at those dots as centers of some sort. Then let's add up the four numbers that surround each dot. So one plus two is three, plus three is six, plus two is eight. So this one is eight. Then the next one, we have two plus two is four, plus two is six, plus three is nine. Then the next one, we have three plus two is five, six, then 10, and then the next one, 4, 5, 8, 11. So then if this is climbing up, maybe going over here, this next sum should be 12. But in fact, no, this one over here is 12. And the pattern, believe it or not, actually continues. The next square adds up to 13, the next four numbers in a square adds up to 14, and so this one with the question mark surely must add to 15, which means the question mark itself would have to be seven. Seven is one of the available answers, and in my opinion, we've pretty much exhausted the obvious patterns here. So I'm pretty confident settling on seven is the definitively correct answer to this question. But let me know in the comments what you think of this interview question, and if you can find any other possible answers with all of these numbers. In the end, this question maybe isn't so horrible, since apparently it did exclude several of the alternative answers you might find, which makes it easier to confidently settle on an answer of seven. Additionally, there were actually some meaningful patterns available here that don't feel like too much of a stretch, which wasn't really true in the last interview question we talked about. I still don't at all like that we pretty much just had to ignore the information of the thick line. The most charitable assumption, I suppose, is that the rendering of this grid just had a glitch in the picture that made this line appear bold. That's certainly possible, but assuming that it's supposed to be there, we're supposed to just ignore it for this solution which is pretty silly. I mean, there were perfectly valid patterns that led to numbers other than seven, and the question explicitly told us to ignore those by not providing them as options. So maybe it should have also said, be sure to ignore any answer which is influenced by the presence of this thick black line. I mean, at this point, the question is picking and choosing which superfluous details it's going to tell us are superfluous. Yes, there's this very apparent pattern of two by three rectangles, which suggest five as an answer, but ignore that, that's superfluous. And in terms of just the merit of questions like these as job interview questions, frankly, I have no idea. I'm not someone who creates job interview questions. I don't know exactly what these accomplish or how much value they bring to the interviewers. My gut feeling though, is that it's hard to imagine there are all that many jobs where someone's probability of success is strongly correlated with their ability to solve basic number puzzles, which is what these sort of things amount to. But at this point, I'm just yapping. We don't know how the interview was conducted or how the interviewee actually had to engage with this question. They're like fun little math puzzles though, so they can be amusing to discuss. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep a cable cut and untuck the table If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal Wish to sell my own fake cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull a brain and push it all the way through the whole blue planet Faded Psychosomatic habits why you so, so